there are a few things in this world that go together better than the Mario IP and RPGs, other than Mario in platforming, Mario in racing, Mario in tennis, Mario in super smashing, Mario in football, or soccer for you American reprobates. Blech. Mario in parties, Mario in basketball, really? Mario's in an NBA game? Well shit, I might actually have to play that one. Mario in Tetris, Mario in boxing, Mario in baseball, Mario in the Olympics, Mario in learning, Mario in running, Luigi in ghost busting. Holy shit, there are a lot of games including the Mario characters, to the point where I'm getting bored of reading the wiki. So when you're making the Mario RPG and you've got this infinite list of Mario crossovers in one hand and a massive cast of characters in the other, who do you decide to start Mario's journey off with? It has to be, of course, the most famous of all the Mario characters, a literal fucking marshmallow. We're going to do the obvious thing here when talking about Super Mario RPG, by the way. We're not that classy, damn it. We're going to talk about the super secret easter egg in Super Mario RPG that no other YouTuber has ever talked about. If you disagree, fight me. We're going to talk about it not because it's interesting, not because it's funny, but because it makes for a really good clickbait title and thumbnail. And this shit is canon, mind. The greatest minds at Nintendo and Square Enix, Squaresoft, Square, Squid whatever they're called now, came together to answer the question that's been in everyone's minds ever since they made the very first Mario Brothers game. Yes, that's right, it's been confirmed that Princess Peach owns a sex toy. To be fair, Hentai Heaven and DeviantArt have been confirming this for years outside the canon Mario games anyway, so it's not that big of a deal really. But we must think of the thumbnail, and so here I am, making another joke of a sexual nature, I would pretend this is the last time, but I'll continue to demean myself now and in the future, I'm sure. Jokes aside, putting the Mario Brothers cast of characters in pretty much any game is a recipe for success, as Nintendo has shown over the last 20 years. And though I'm sure most of our North American friends got to experience this bliss back in 1996, for some reason, Nintendo didn't think it was worth it to release this masterpiece of a game in Europe. So I only really got to play this game through a few years ago after buying like 10 different fucking NTSC to PAL converters until I found one that actually worked. God damn it! Super Mario RPG welcomes you into a world that's definitively Mario, but with a Square Enix flavour. At times it's like you're getting the best of both worlds. The isometric view and the sprites make this possibly the best looking Mario game of the 90s. It's the cookie cake version of a Mario game, all the tastiness and crunch of a cookie, with the icing and sheer size of cake. Also, you can eat the whole thing and be like, I had a cookie today, and it's still technically the truth. That only really works with cookie cakes, but it's a great life hack, so it's staying in. Super Mario RPG manages to blend Square Enix and Mario sensibilities seamlessly. Like, even though it's a top-down isometric RPG, you still get to jump, which is nice. They just turned it into a battle mechanic. I don't know why, but a Mario game where he doesn't jump would anger me. I mean, his name was originally Jumpman, I suppose. The thing that really blows me away about Super Mario RPG is how well classic Mario music and classic Square Enix music work together. When you're in the Mushroom Kingdom, the cosy, calm Final Fantasy-esque music flows in the background. In the overworld, you're carried along by the jaunty melody of the classic Super Mario Brothers theme. Sometimes they mix both, and it's just bliss. I've been looking for the soundtrack online for ages with no luck, outside of YouTube videos. If you have a link, let me know. I'll be your best friend. Super Mario RPG sits on a pedestal, especially for us Europeans, along with Earthbound and like Clay Fighters, Conquerors Bad Fur Day and King of Fighters 2000. It's not only desirable because it's rare, but because it's also a really fucking good game, even down to the smallest details, like the character models. I don't know how they did it, but Square actually managed to make Mario shorter and squatter than usual, and you know what? Thick Mario is best Mario. Owning one of these is like owning a Ferrari. People are jealous, not only because there aren't a lot of them in the world, but because they do what they set out to do so well. The story is less shoehorned than Kingdom Hearts 2, it flows well, and you can actually understand what's going on. If you ever played Kingdom Hearts and don't get what I'm talking about, just look up Kingdom Hearts Story Explained on YouTube. I don't think most of the people who made those videos even really know what the fuck's going on in the games, but god damn it if they're not going to take an hour or three and try to work it out. It's weird to think that over the years Square Enix, or Squaresoft, whatever they're called right now, have actively gotten worse at these crossover RPG games. Super Mario RPG's charm lies in its simplicity. It succeeds in the same way that peanut butter and strawberry jam succeeds. It's simple, but fantastic. It's hard to do wrong, and when it's done right, it's going to be near perfect. Done wrong though, it's a total fucking mess.
Thanks again for sitting through my inane ramblings. This one was weird. Like, I love this game, but I've not played it nearly as much as the rest of the games we've talked about, or that I've played on Twitch in the past, so I'm sure I've missed some good jokes, some goofy stuff, and some interesting things to talk about. Let me know in the comments what I missed, and why I'm an asshole for missing it. Anyway, if you liked the video, you can find more Super Megastore at twitch.tv slash supermegastore, Twitter is at supermegastore underscore, on Instagram we're supermegastoreuk, I can't think of any new Snapchat slash Instagram jokes at this point, so I'm just going to write this. Oh, I really read that out loud, eh? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Your views, likes, comments and follows really mean a lot to us. It's going to be hard to become the next Logan Paul without your continued support. So again, thanks. That's really the plan, by the way. Not a joke. Not a joke at all. Bye! Love you loads.